Hi, this is Christy with Guidepost to Wellness coming to you again. Welcome back for all of those folks that have watched some of my other videos and welcome to any new uh, folks that are watching. This channel is about all types of wellness topics, uh, especially for those with any type of chronic disease or like uh, autoimmune disorders. And today's topic I thought would be a good one to talk about is about sleep. Um, for those of you that are returning, you do know that sleep is one of the four foundations, getting enough rest for your body and your mind. And why I wanted to talk about it today is because I did not get good sleep last night. It was one of those funny situations where something set off our car alarm. I'm not sure if it's a sensor or actually, you know, something legitimate, but our car and our driveway is right outside the bedroom window. So there's nothing like being in your first REM cycle <laughs> and having the car alarm go off. It took me probably a good hour and a half to get the adrenaline <laughs> rush down so that I could fall back to sleep. So now I know it's gonna affect me today, but don't worry, I, I'm good about getting my uh, sleep and getting caught up on it. But that's one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, some sleep habits and I'm gonna be doing multiple videos on the different things that are really relevant and important when it comes to sleep. But one of the things that I talk to a lot of my patients, um, my clients about, and th that I just hear from a lot of people in general is, is about their sleep uh, pre-bedtime habits and their routines. And a lot of times the fact that they really don't have good habits and routines so what I wanted to talk about today are some things that are really important when it comes to sleep. And a few things that I see a lot are around the, the fact that people spend a lot of time with electronics before they go to sleep, like right before. And I know that my husband and I, we, we do sometimes we'll watch a movie or something. Um, and then go to bed pretty quickly after that. But neither one of us really has any issues sleeping. We sleep well and we, we get regular uh, sleep. But a lot of folks that don't get enough sleep, that's one of the things that I can really identify is that they don't allow themselves the unwind time. And that's one of the biggest keys, I think, when it comes to pre-sleep habits is having a set routine that allows you to have that unwind time. And the things that I'm talking about are, especially if you have any high levels of anxiety or things of that nature, is, is disconnecting electronically uh, for at least an hour, if not more, uh, before you go to sleep, especially if you find that your mind's very active. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, it is to allow yourself to have some of that relaxation time. But one of the main factors really is the lights that are being admitted from the electronic device, the blue lights, and especially coming from closer sources like smartphones and tablets and computers and things of that nature. Um, one lady that I, I work with will talk about falling asleep with her phone because she's Snapchatting or watching videos or something like that before she goes to sleep. When, and while I can recognize that may be a, a form of unwinding, the challenge there is the blue lights. So there are some apps. I'm going to put some links down below um, for some apps to take a look at. That's one thing that last night I considered maybe getting up and reading, but I didn't have any physical books. Uh, from the library or anything that I wanted to read and I didn't have a blue light app on my cell phone so I just I did some other um, mental exercises and some meditation to kind of help me but it's really important to allow your body the time to relax trying to go from watching an exciting movie or working um, I remember when I was on call and different things and would be you know mentally stimulated working on a problem and then try to lay down and go to sleep it, it, it just doesn't work so that's important the other factor with having a pre-bedtime routine is the fact that while a lot of people recognize for kids it's important to have a routine and have them go to bed the same time every day or every evening and get up about the same time even on weekends we as adults seldom do that. And um, 
Sometimes if maybe there are prescriptions or medications or things involved, people might be a little bit more regular with their times that they go to bed and get up in the morning. But in general, a lot of people have very irregular schedules when they go to bed. And that's one of the things that I've worked with many, many of my clients on is, is kind of doing some backward planning. What time do you want to get to bed and start working on setting small new habits uh, so that they can have that better nighttime routine. Another thing that I think is really, really important is to recognize what the bedroom's for. The bedroom's for sleeping and intimacy and things of that nature. It's not for eating in bed, uh, for watching television. I think that's one of the things that I see a lot of people do where they want to fall asleep watching TV or having the noise of the TV in the background. And that's just really not the best types of habits to have. If you need to have some type of noise, there's there are apps and there are some uh, electronic type of noise makers. Um, I really like Sleep Salon, which is a binaural uh, brain entrainment program. I can put a link for that down below. That can help with uh, falling asleep and providing that that noise, a fan or something of that nature. So, for today's purposes, I'd really like the takeaway of working on having a set pre-bed routine, um, having a set schedule of where you're trying to go to bed around the same time and get up the same time each day, even on your days off, even if you just get up and you do something a little bit more relaxing or, or something like that. But really looking at your electronic use and looking at what you're doing before uh, you go to bed and trying to back that up and if it is something where you know you find it relaxing or you're reading a kindle or you're you're doing something of that nature for your relaxation before bed then really look at making sure you've got some type of blue light blocker there are glasses you can get my husband and i both bought a pair but they just were very uncomfortable and since i already wear glasses most of the time uh, that just wasn't practical so we didn't spend a lot on those but it just was really wasn't practical so I'm definitely going to look at adding some of the apps to our smartphones um, and laptops and just making sure that we're taking that extra step. But we don't, we have one television, it's in the living room, um, and we generally do go to bed about the same time. So those are the two things. Look at what you're doing before you go to bed to come up with a relaxation type of routine. Start to unplug start to slow down, relax a little bit, um, look at what your routine is, look at your use of electronics, and then see if there's ways that you can start making small changes in order to incorporate those better habits. Um, as I talked about in a recent video about habit formation, small changes are the best unless you're making a, a major environmental change like moving or a new job or something like that. So. If you're interested in talking with a health coach and getting some perspective and suggestions on how to help with those bedtime routines, check out the link below to set up a, a free initial consultation and we can talk about some of the um, challenges that you may be finding in your nighttime routine or your sleep routine and see if we can not work on developing some new habits with that. But don't worry, tonight I will um, get back into my normal sleep routine and um, hopefully there won't be any more uh, nighttime car alarms going off. We'll have to get that fixed for sure if there are. But uh, until next time, be well.